Brilliant, thanks Lisa. So I am really pleased to be part of the IPHM Wellness Festival. Um, obviously it's a collaborative event bringing together everyone interested in holistic wellness and beauty. The event has been organised by IPHM and you can find out more about them on their website, which is www.iphm.co.uk. Um, so before I kind of get into the main topic today, I'll just share a little bit about Be Sober. Um, we, there's three of us who are actually co-founders of Be Sober, myself, Alex, um, then Lisa, who also runs IPHM, as you know, and Joe. Now, the three of us, Lisa and I have been best friends since we were 11 years old, and Lisa met Joe very early on in her sobriety, and they formed a, formed a sober social group called Be Sober Manchester. We, I got sober later, and then Lisa and I formed something called the Sober Experiment, which actually is going to, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a second. Um, and we formed together, the three of us, uh, Be Sober, which is a CIC company, which means it's a community interest company. We're non-profit, we don't actually make any money for ourselves, and everything we do is all put back into the business to be able to provide support. Now, there's two kind of main streams to be sober, really. One is the social aspect. So we aim to bring together like minded people who are traveling along this journey of sobriety and want to keep connections, but are maybe struggling to um, not necessarily keep their old friendships, but to, to find new sober people and, and a new sober social life because believe it or not once you've been sober for a while it, it really does change and um, if somebody had said to me like a year and a half ago you won't be going in pubs anymore other than the lockdown obviously I really wouldn't have, have accepted that I wouldn't have been able to see my social life any other way but it's completely transformed so that's one aspect of, of what we do and the other aspect is we provide support through coaching we have some sober support lounges, we have sober drop-ins, um, we have group coaching online, we have our sober experiment, we have a fantastic brand new membership package, which is a monthly membership um, for people who want that extra support, all just kind of at their feet really. So um, you can find out a lot about that on our new website, which is www.besoberofficial.com. And I'll tell you about that at the end. And also we're on pretty much every social media channel that you can think of. So I'm Alex, as I've said, I'm not going to tell you everybody's um, background, because, as in mine, Lisa and Joe's, because their stories are very much their stories. And I'm not going to tell you all mine because it will take all of this session up. But basically, I decided to take a break from drinking initially for 30 days and look at it as an experiment. And the reason I did that was because my mental health was in quite a bad state following a miscarriage that I'd had. And I wanted to just see what life was like without a drink and see if it could make me feel any better. What I actually found was that there was no way I was ever going to go back to drinking. Um, in the main, my anxiety that I'd suffered all my life pretty much disappeared and my sleep sleep was unbelievable I couldn't believe how much I'd, I'd, I was sleeping better and yeah it just became a permanent fixture so I my topic is uh, to kickstart dry January and I wanted to share with you a few of the tools that I found helped me in my first 30 days and if you're doing dry January, which hopefully you are giving it a bash, you'll, you'll all be doing it for different reasons. Or maybe you're thinking about taking a break now and you've missed the start of it. Or maybe you're just thinking about having a go anyway. So the tools that I want to share with you may well help to kickstart and maintain your 30 day um, kind of 30, 31 day period. And you never know if you follow these. As with many people who've just joined our sober experiment with the intention of doing it for just a month you may find that you want to do this permanently or, or much longer. And I don't want to scare you off saying that, but yeah, that, that can happen. Side effect of doing this may have lasting effects. So I'm just going to share with you um, a very short PowerPoint. And then what I'd like to do is hopefully leave enough time at the end for people to unmute themselves um, and to share some of their uh, questions or maybe even their own ideas on this and um, can I just ask at this point that if you do want to speak at any point and interrupt please feel free uh, but could you use the raise hand function if you know how to do or if you switch your camera on and just give me a little wave if I can see you 
um, I will respond to that as well. You are all muted. Um, if you can leave it muted when you are not speaking, but obviously you will need to unmute yourself if you want to say something and then remute yourself afterwards. The other thing to say here is that because of the topic, it's quite sensitive. And we'd ask that even if it's not your not like your experience that somebody's sharing, that you be respectful and mindful of that. Not everybody's journey is the same when we're talking about sobriety. And if we can, you know, obviously the rules of the, the whole festival are about not being discriminative in any way. So that, that applies here as well. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen with you. I'm hoping that you can see that. Okay, so when you're starting out on the journey to sobriety or taking that dry January break or any 30 day break, it's really important to start to build a toolbox. Now, in sobriety, this is going to become like your lifeline. Um, so the, the tools we're talking about here is just any coping mechanism that's going to help you to cope during that 30 days, during that break to shift or relieve any kind of cravings that you might have and you'll be surprised when these kind of cravings pop up they just pop up randomly even if you don't drink very much so the first thing to do if you're starting and you want to get kick started is to write down all your ideas of healthy things that you could do when you experience a craving now when i say a craving i'm not talking about that kind of massive oh my goodness i need a drink i need a drink i need a drink just when you would normally have one. So you might be the type of person that once a week takes out their bottle of wine and just has a glass to take the edge off any stress. So what sort of things could you do instead? It's all about planning and preparation here. So some of the things that I did was um, downloaded an, a, an app, um, inspirational quotes. That was actually Lisa's idea. And um, you could get a day counter to keep you motivated or um, just following that wonderful session that we've just had, maybe do some mindfulness or meditation, download one of those apps um, and write down your reasons. Why are you doing it? Um, are, you, are you doing it for charity? Are you doing it for health? Are you doing it for wellness? I mean, there's lots of kind of side effects of going sober. Your hair becomes much shinier, much thicker. Your skin becomes clearer. Your eyes start to sparkle. So maybe you just want to look a little bit better or maybe you want to tie it in with another detox um, or, a, or a bit of a January diet. It's not unusual to do that. The other thing to maybe do is to search for some social groups, Be Sober, no hints, um, in your area. Now, we're really lucky at Be Sober because we have a number of volunteers across the country, our wonderful set of Be Sober ambassadors, who hopefully when this lockdown ends will be popping up to do live events everywhere. But they are fantastic. We have like already have a book club. We, we host our lounges online and the ambassadors are a really key part in that. So you can also have a look on our website and find a group near you and see if there's anyone nearby that might take your fancy. Um, and if there's not one, well, first of all, get in touch with us because we'd love to have you if you are sober and you're thinking of starting one up. But um, And we are taking on ambassadors, by the way, if you've done more than a, a, a period of sobriety. I think we initially said 100 days sobriety, but it's about being secure. And, and yet be brave enough to start a group. That's what Lisa and Joe, the other two founders of Be Sober did. There wasn't one in Manchester, so they decided they were going to make one. And that's where we've come from. So be brave. There's lots of people. If, you, if you're looking for one, other people are too. Um, and yet have a, an accountability partner. So tell somebody, if you can in real life, fantastic. Um, they can help keep you on track and just you know knowing your plans it's just that extra bit of support but if you haven't got anybody in real life that you can either trust or that you want to tell join one of the support groups again we've got a fantastic support group the be sober support group and it's b double e as in the buzzy b for the manchester b um please feel free to join our support group because there's plenty of people in there who you could buddy up with who are on their journey from literally day zero today a million and one and um, we've got people in there who are 16 17 years sober really important for me to say as well that this uh, many many of our sober people myself included were what you would just call normal drinkers 
um, not kind of looking for AA support or detox or rehab, just normal drinkers who wanted to take a break and ended up loving it so much that they've stuck to it. So the other thing you might not be aware of is there is a whole genre of books called quit lit, um, not quick lit, which is what I thought it was when I first heard that term. Um, it's quit literature and there's loads of it. There's absolutely loads of people who've been there, done that, sharing the stories, sharing the scientific aspect. And we can make some good recommendations for you on that as well. And there's also podcasts, loads of podcasts and audio books. Um, the Be Sober, it's actually called the Sober Experiment podcast by Be Sober. We've just literally recorded and released episode one of season three yesterday. So take a listen at that. It's on all the platforms, Google Play, um, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud and, and loads more as well that I can't think of. Um, and it can just keep you motivated and, and realise that you're not alone when you're doing it. So if you're just doing this for dry January and you suddenly start to feel a little bit like, oh, it's locked down, all my friends have decided that they're going to cave and, and drink the wine, it can feel really deflating. But listening to some of this, the, the podcast and the quitlet can really boost you. So take a look at that. OK, the next top tip from the toolbox is to find an inspirational so, social media account. There are load when you first go sober you just find this whole hidden community of people that you didn't know existed and everybody and I'm not just saying this out of being biased they are just so welcoming and supportive and it's almost like nobody's competing everybody just it's just sober for everybody everybody wants you to to succeed everybody's ready to pick you up to to lend a hand so following all these um, social media accounts can really get you in that zone you know they say that you will become a product of the people the six people that you associate with the most I, I would I can't think of six people uh, you know six accounts that I wouldn't want to be part of they really do influence everything I do from my social life to my reading to my self-development and it because the way sobriety works it just makes you want to learn more and more and more about yourself. I've never been on such a journey of self-discovery in my life. It's just, it's got some major, major highs, some weird lows as well. But wow, feel the feels. Talk about taking out a depression that, and feeling things. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, we're not going to tell you who to follow, um, be sober, but anyone else, just take a little look on Instagram and just put in sober and you will see the absolute myriad of choice come up for you. So another top tip is one thing that I find or found very early on is when I thought I was maybe wanting a glass of wine, I was actually just wanting a drink of something um, and keeping really well hydrated can just take the edge off that. If you are going to tie this in with things like doing a workout uh, and getting yourself fit for summer and so on, just make sure you're taking on enough water to be doing that. If you're tying it in with a diet, I don't know if you realise this, but sometimes just having a drink when you're dieting can make you realise you weren't hungry, actually you were, you were thirsty. So this is one of my top tips for anything. Whenever you feel like you want to eat or you want to drink wine or you want to have a cigarette have a glass of water sometimes thirst can be really misunderstood okay um really good opportunity during sobriety now the funny thing is with this i really believed that i would lose a little bit of weight when i started my sobriety I was convinced that i would just kind of shed the pounds the opposite happened um wine's got loads and loads of calories in it so when you stop drinking it and you're kind of sugar uh, blood sugars drop down you start to want to eat more and I did eat more and I replaced my wine with chocolate buttons um, which made me pile on a couple of stone if you can recognize this early on and you're doing it just as uh, like I say as a 30-day thing or a dry January thing then recognize that sometimes you're going to want more sugar and have some health healthy options in if you're doing this as a permanent thing don't worry about putting the weight on um, just do it. It's better to stay sober and eat as much junk food as you want than the other way around because you can deal with this afterwards. And that's exactly what I've done. And it's not taken very long to turn it around. Okay, you've just had a session on this, anyone who saw it. So meditation, 
another fantastic zone to get your head in. Now, I, I am, I'm not going to pretend that I'm the meditation guru. I'm really not. Um, Lisa's definitely the one to speak to about meditation and the one who does this the most. But one thing I have started doing since uh, stopping drinking is just being more mindful of my surroundings and maybe thinking a little bit more. You, you find yourself drifting into this weird zone of, oh, what, what's my life about all the time? So it's it's quite um, an eye-opening experience. I'm, I do try meditation. I do it very short spurts of it um, and I'm learning, but it's a really fantastic complimenter to it so if you're finding that during dry january you're thinking oh i want to cave if you do meditate please do so at that point because it can really help to get you back on track um affirmations now this one for me again is a little bit of a funny one because i think if you're doing i mean these are fantastic anyway doing affirmations and telling yourself how amazing you are because it can change your mindset but if you are doing kind of a dry january taking a break you may just want to affirm that you're not going to drink. So keep it really simple. Um, I'm not drinking during dry January would be enough. And just doing that each morning and telling yourself that you need to stay positive, staying focused on the goal can really make a difference to your mindset. One thing that we do at Be Sober through the sober experiment is look at how mindset is affected. Um, quitting drinking, relying solely on willpower notoriously doesn't work um if you always feel like you want to drink then you're not really free of, of alcohol if you change your mindset around it and you start to realize what alcohol is what it's doing to your body how you can experience different feelings without it it really can change the way you feel and it can keep you positive that's a bit about mindfulness so i'm just going to skip past Okay, exercise. Now, this for me has been the single most important thing in my sobriety, not for fitness, but just for stress. Because what I found was that I actually drank to alleviate stress and anxiety, or so I thought. I didn't know that alcohol makes anxiety worse. So a really quick science lesson here. When alcohol is a depressant, so when you drink alcohol, you start to relax. And when your body recognizes that you're relaxing to try and wake you back up, it pours out a load of stimulants, which get you back up high again. That's why if you've ever had a night on the drink, Friday, Saturday, whatever, a lot of people wake up feeling like the heart's racing at three in the morning, wide awake and can't get back to sleep. It's just the um, number of stimulants that are left back in the blood that were trying to counter the alcohol in the first place. So what I found was initially when I stopped drinking, my anxiety got worse. And I don't think people um, expect that to happen, really. They think it's going to get better. It got worse because I was left with all these stimulants and my body producing them all the time and nothing, as in the alcohol, not to take them away. So exercise was really good for me because it meant that I got to use those stimulants up so anything you can do it doesn't have to be a massive 60 minute workout or a huge run just getting up and going for a walk in the fresh air can be enough to keep you focused and heading towards that dry January okay this is amazing hobbies you know what every time I turn slide I'm going to say this is my favorite thing because it is um after 20 years this week, I've picked up an acoustic guitar again. I don't know what happens in sobriety. First of all, you just get loads more time. Even if you only drank like me on a Friday and a Saturday, you just get loads more time. You've not got hangovers to deal with. You're not thinking about going to the shop. You're not planning when you're going to drink, when you're going to stop drinking and the rest of it. And all of a sudden, you just get this time to pick up as many hobbies as you want to do again it's absolutely amazing so what I would say here is if you used to do something that you've given up because you no longer have time as an adult now in dry January is the perfect time to try to pick something like that back up again if you're doing it during dry January especially during lockdown another perfect time but if there's something that you want to try that you've not tried before likewise do it now while you're in dry january perfect opportunity and time to do it okay so this is for the people who like to journal um sober blogging so 
we get we've got a blog on our website please take a look at it it's www.besoberofficial.com forward slash blog and people are starting to submit their sober blogs to us and we are happy to publish them so if you've done a period of sobriety and want to tell people about it please feel free to do so um and do it through us it's a good way of recording your experiences it's a good way of recording any triggers if you don't know what a trigger is the trigger is anything that makes you feel like you want to have a drink it's a good way of blogging or journaling your um, cravings as well and when they're occurring so if you find that 6 p.m when you would normally be cooking dinner is the time that you're getting a bit of a craving you can step back and have a little think about well what what is it that's making that happen is it just because i normally have a glass of wine when i'm cooking a meal or is it because that's a particularly stressful time you can start to narrow those down and take a look at them okay so i did promise you a little bit of a look at our website and social media everywhere we are be sober cic or be sober dot cic on instagram so if you want to follow us on instagram at be sober dot cic you don't have to be sober to follow us on instagram you don't have to be sober to like us on facebook and technically you don't have to be sober to join the facebook support group we, we do ask that you are sober curious that you want to do a period of sobriety um, on there the membership is for people who are trying to get sober and that's a paid monthly membership and that allows us to put money back into the company to offer the fantastic support that we have actually got so i'm just going to stop the share there does anybody i would like to go um to talk a little bit more in a second about some of the how to deal with the mindfulness and so on obviously this is the wellness festival does anybody have any questions at this point? Would anybody like to type anything in the chat or come on and have a chat? I'm just going along. There's no raised hands or anything. Okay. So one of the things that happens happened for me very early on in my sobriety was I started to think about um, my mental health quite a lot more. And with my mental health it, it was like I say it was an anxiety disorder that I had and constantly I was always worrying about what next what if always about the future always about what will happen if this happens all the time and a really good technique for me was about just sitting back and staying right in the moment what can I see around me what can I feel what can I hear what can I taste just staying so mindful about my surroundings and it just helped me keep in a sober place it helped me to connect with myself again what you find is when you take alcohol out of the equation you become really aware of all your feelings so if you're very very happy you feel very very happy like on a high happy but if you're very, very sad, it can be really different. It can be an unusual experience that you've never felt before. Um, you know, with alcohol particularly. So one of the experiences that I had was grieving. And when you're grieving and you're just having the odd drink, one or two, it can really numb that. Um, and you don't realise until much later that it was numbing it. Um, and like I say, because I wasn't an every single day drinker, there's no way I would have thought that that would happen but taking alcohol completely out of the equation just at that point meant that I became hyper aware of everything. So staying mindful and staying really aware of the now in the moment was absolutely imperative for me to stop me reaching for a drink. Now, I'm a beginner, an absolute beginner with meditation um, to the point where I literally sit and it's always guided that I do. I use apps to do it. And I'm at the point where I just count my breathing and I focus on the in now. I'm, you know, many of you will be much further ahead than I am um, in terms of meditation. But it's a real experience and a real chance to experiment with the things that you've never tried before. So as I say, for me, wanting to be part of, uh, 
to learn how to meditate was massive. It's something that I'd never wanted to do in my life. Um, I actually thought it was really strange. Was, you know, what do people do? What do they think about? H how do they make their mind blank? I didn't understand it. I didn't have an understanding of it at all. So to be able to now sit back in my sobriety and think, wow, I actually am so aware of my feelings, my emotions. I know when I'm high, I know when I'm low. I don't always know how to deal with it, but I do know that I won't reach for a drink. I know that I will never reach for a drink. I just wouldn't want one. So some of the benefits for me have been much clearer skin, um, much healthier hair. There has eventually been a regulation in my weight. Um, initially, like I say, I was a little bit crazy with the chocolate buttons, so that didn't work. Time lots and lots of time and just an absolute presence I cannot get across to you the presence so I've got three children and they have had more time from me than ever before ever from they're like 15 down to four I am the single most patient parent that you can imagine like my parenting's just completely changed so whereas I used to get quite irritable and um, particularly on a weekend and put it down to the fact that I was tired only after one or two, it was 100% due to the alcohol. The other thing is clarity. I, your mental clarity, you just, you just wake up. <laughs> that is the only way that I can describe it. You just wake up. It's, it's as if, I know this sounds cliche, but it's as if somebody switched a big bright light on in your world and all of a sudden you can see so much more. You're so, your brain functioning. You know, it, when I read something now, it's like I'm learning all the time, all the time. Like it, it's like a, a hunger for wanting to know more. I want to know more about myself. I want to discover more. I want to know more about how humans interact with each other. I want to know more about our energy levels. It's fantastic um less stressed not only does it help me to not be stressed by um not drinking alcohol but i'm actually less stressed anyway through not drinking so if i do get stressed and i do because i'm human it's almost like i've learned how to self-regulate and like i said one of the ways is to just think about the now put myself back in my uh, surroundings see what's going on but just not having having alcohol in your system naturally reduces stress it reduces stress on you physiologically and it reduces stress on you mentally okay a little bit then about sleep so believe it or not your sleep for me is one of the most affected things by alcohol so generally speaking not just on the nights where you've at, where you've had a drink but throughout, you know, if I, first of all, I fall asleep really quickly. So some people say, well, I'm going to have one glass of wine at night because it helps me to sleep. And that is true. Initially, it does. One glass of wine would relax you initially. As I said before, once that wine goes in and you, the depressants released into your body, though, your body will fight back by releasing stimulants. So actually you will have restless sleep. You're not going to go into proper sleep. And the other thing is that people say, you know, alcohol does help me to sleep. It doesn't, it, it just renders you unconscious. So even after a few glasses, what's actually happening is that you become unconscious. And then once you start to become conscious again, that's when you get into that wide awake state of, oh my goodness, I can't go back to sleep. My heart's racing, um, the sweats, feeling generally horrible can't tell you anybody how amazing it is to never ever ever have a hangover ever just to, that is the one thing that you never get tired of just knowing even on a night out even when I've been out on nights out with friends who are drinking to have that little bit of smugness about you that you're not going to be hungover that's enough that's enough to get me through the night all the time if you're doing dry January and particularly if you're in the UK during this lockdown at the moment, the temptation is, well, there's nothing to do. I'm going to have a drink anyway. If you're trying to get through dry January, just play it forwards. If you have a drink, what will happen? How are you going to feel tomorrow? How little sleep you'll have? And so on. 
not having a hangover is the best thing ever. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you realise that I'm quite a happy person. And this hasn't always been the case. You know, at one point I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Um, I was in a very, very low place. I didn't know how to get out of it. I had had medication and just felt numb from medication and something had to change and taking alcohol out of the equation and I'll go back to it again we're not talking somebody who drank every single day this is I drank a bottle of wine on a Friday a bottle of wine on a Saturday most of the time and it made a massive difference not in the first seven to ten days that can take a bit of getting used to but certainly after that my depression went it completely went it's absolutely no coincidence that the majority of suicides and attempted suicides happen under the influence of alcohol it's that vicious cycle first of all alcohol gives you that you know the guts to do it and the lack of inhibition and also the alcohol is part of the mental health not for everybody and i'm being be i'm very i'm generalizing it there but it's no coincidence that that is the case it does make you a happier person when you take alcohol out of the equation altogether so i really would love to get some questions please does anybody have some questions because i feel like i'm going around and talking to you about all these things which i'm happy to do but i'd love to get some audience participation if there is anyone no Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about happiness then. Okay, in sobriety, there's something called the pink fluffy cloud. Now, if you're going to do 30 days, you will experience the pink fluffy cloud, which is why so many people stay sober after the 30 days. When we first started out, and I'm talking Lisa and myself, before we became Be Sober CIC, we did just run the sober experiment and we marketed it as the way we'd done it take a break from alcohol for 30 days and we've still got people now nearly two years later who are sober because they just found that taking alcohol out of their lives made them into happier people and made them into you know sunny shiny people and they've just carried it on go on to any sober account and just take a little look at the scene the positivity is amazing they're just and it's not somebody once described it to myself and Lisa is oh it sounds like a bit of a cult it's it's it feels like that sometimes because there's all these people walking around with positive mindset and a really sunny outlook and it's true it taking the alcohol out taking that depressant out no matter how little you drink really can make a massive difference to your mood now I just want to also talk a little bit about day one Day one is really scary. Okay, so if whether you're doing whether you're wanting to do this just for dry January or whether you're wanting to do it for another 30 day period or you're wanting to give sobriety a go, it's really important to plan effectively your day one so you don't have to keep going back there. Anyone who's attempted sobriety more than once will tell you if they have to go back to day one, it just gets that bit harder. Yes, they've got the tools to overcome it. Yes, they know how better to deal with it, but they also know that they've got that rough patch at the beginning to go through while the body detoxes. If anybody is interested in finding out a little bit more about day one, if you visit our blog on our website, there's lots of information there um, about the tools and tips for day one as well. Okay. Lisa, I'm actually pretty much out here. So do you want to pop on and give me a hand at this point? I know you're IPHM. 